like to just tell you a little bit uh, about um, how we got involved in some of these related issues. The Council of Islamic Organizations of Greater Chicago is a federation of approximately 50 mosques and Muslim institutions in and around the metropolitan Chicagoland area. And as a result of our uh, organizing work of the Muslim institutions, we have had the opportunity to leverage that uh, network of the Muslim community towards social justice and uh, uh, political issues um, that such as such as uh, undocumented is uh, issues and uh, uh, various uh, other issues. And so um, that's uh, it. Was in that context that we found out about a young lady named Hasiba Belvashir uh, back in 2005. Uh, I was in private practice at the time, and um, let me tell you a little bit about what her, what, what, what happened to her. Hasiba Belvashir was, was a uh, young woman of Algerian descent that was living in the United States, right here in the Chicago Rand area. Uh, in March of 2005, about March 1st, she was traveling, uh, we know now that she was going back to visit some of her family in Paris, in, in France. And um, when she, her flight from Chicago uh, went through Heathrow, at Heathrow on March 1st, she was detained um, by immigration authorities. Uh, she was detained there for several days, and then she was returned back to what was her point of origin, which was O'Hare, uh, here in Chicago. She was returned here by the immigration authorities, and she was held for several days in various locations. And on March 17, 2005, while she was being held at McHenry County uh, Jail, she killed herself. And um, those are the, that's the overview of what happened. The, the details are a sordid tale of um, mismanagement, uh, negligence, uh, uh, gross indifference to human dignity. Um, what we've been able to find out, what the attorney at the People's Law Office, uh, whom we helped the family retain, uh, has been able to ascertain subsequently uh, through a case of wrongful death that was filed, is that when she was brought back to O'Hare, um, she was then uh, taken to a police station in Stone Park where she was held overnight. And um, the next morning she was transferred to another location, uh, uh, I think it was Bedford Park, another police station. When she was there, uh, she had some very severe medical uh, issues that required her to be taken to a local hospital, to an emergency room. I'll describe for you what uh, some of those medical conditions, you know, what, what, what she had. She, according to the people's office, um, the way they, they, the, the information that they had, that uh, she had an extreme amount of uh, anxiety, nausea, she began to vomit. Uh, she was shaking, and um, so they took her to the emergency room, and they, from the emergency room to the hospital, uh, ICE came and um, had her transported from the emergency room to McHenry County you know, Jail, which is where uh, they had a contract with ICE to detain um, undocumented immigrants. And um, the problem is that at that point, the medical records from the ER weren't properly transmitted over to McHenry County Jail. Um, once she had gotten to McHenry County Jail, she wasn't properly screened, so um, the facility there wasn't aware of the various medical conditions that she had suffered just the night before, as well as the fact that she had a history of uh, suicidal ideation and uh, one previous suicidal attempt. So none of this was brought to the attention of the McHenry County facility. And um, once she was there, she was there for about eight days before she had killed herself. Now, during that time, she had requested medical attention. She had brought it to the attention of the facility there. 
that she had this severe anxiety, that she had had this history of suicide. Um, but in spite of all that, uh, the necessary precautions weren't taken to protect Hasiba from you know, the possibility of her committing suicide. Um, what's particularly heinous about this situation is that um, this particular facility that is contracted with uh, ICE had been identified as uh, you know, severely deficient in the area of um, having a proper protocol, a proper process and procedure for dealing with particularly suicidal uh, detainees. And what's particularly heinous is that um, in 2004, another evaluation by ICE determined the same thing. And uh, in spite of that, uh, no process, no procedure was put in place. And as a result, the day that Asiba died, she was in what was called a medical pod, which was supposed to be a place where um, you know detainees were, from, were monitored for health reasons. Hasiba was found by one of the um, you know in, one of the guards, face down with her face in the corner, her legs sprawled out, and she wasn't moving. Instead of opening up the, the, the door and going inside to, to check if she was all right, the, the guard went to some other people who were uh, staffing that medical pod unit and um, asked if there was anything wrong. If there was any particular history that they should be worried about, you know, they ignored it. Only about 40 minutes later, when that same individual went back to not check on her, but just to bring, you know, dinner for the individuals who were on the medical pod unit, did, did, he, did he notice that she was still in the exact same strange position that he called, you know, for an emergency. They opened up the cell or the pod that she was in. When they saw that she was not responsive, instead of using a defibrillator, instead of you know uh, administering CPR, um, they left again to you know get uh, get somebody else. In the end, she was transported and uh, and, and she was pronounced dead. And um, I mean, it's just it's just so tragic that um, this is an incident where these guards obviously had absolutely no uh, training for how to deal with a situation like this. And we know from the facts that that was the case, and we know that from the audits that, the, uh, that ICE did, that um, there was absolutely no systematic training that was provided for the McHenry County personnel that were in charge of uh, ICE detainees. Um, that is, in a nutshell, what had happened to Hasiba Bel Bashir. Um, there's quite a, quite a bit of uh, additional facts um, that uh, Janine Hoft of uh, People's Law Office has been able to uh, uh, uncover, but um, the case is still pending. Uh, a wrongful death suit was brought against uh, McHenry County, against um, the medical service provider that was contracted at McHenry, as well as um, the uh, Department of Homeland Security through, uh, through, a, through a separate federal action. They actually are still in the process of um, uh, pre-discovery litigation. There's been a lot of motions going back and forth, motions to dismiss and, and whatnot. And uh, they were actually in court this morning um, in Rockford Federal Court trying to consolidate both the state action, the, the action in federal court against the uh, against McHenry County, as well as the federal action that was brought subsequently against the, the, the federal um, the, the federal agencies. And um, it looks like now discovery is still going to be put off several months until the um, federal complaint that's been consolidated can be answered or otherwise pled by the federal <coughs> government. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, what the status of the litigation is. We. We're fortunate that um, Hasiba Bel uh has, has some relatives here in Chicago that are actively uh, working with the Council of Islamic Organizations. So we were able to you know, reach out to a family member, and that was the only way that we were able to really begin to gain access to 
um, what was happening with her case in McHenry County. Because had we not had that familial contact, um, you know, we wouldn't be privy to, I think, a lot of the, um, you know, things that uh, about her death. Because you know there wasn't uh, a family member there to you know give us access, and um, because of that good luck, uh, we were able to then work with that family to um, we were able to work with the family to provide the legal representation, which I think has been enabled us to shed light on one anecdotal incident of um, of uh, undocumented detainee abuse in, in the system. Right now.